Hi, I'm Chris Bishop, and welcome to a very warm evening in Kigali, Rwanda. We're here for the East Africa leg of the All Africa Business Leaders Awards. Tonight, we'll be celebrating the best in leadership across the entire East African region. These awards are brought to you by Johnny Walker Blue Label. It was a warm night in Kigali, sprinkled with lucky rain. It was to be a gathering of the names and faces leading one of the most fascinating economies in Africa. Rwanda is a remarkable business story in anyone's book. The country emerged from the terror and destruction of genocide to rebuild its economy with a vengeance. Nearly 20 years on, Rwanda is one of the easiest countries to do business in compared to the rest of the continent. It takes you a mere six hours to register a company here. Investors are welcome. The hosting of the East Africa leg of the All Africa Business Leaders Awards in Kigali is another sign of this progress. For us, uh, coming to East Africa was always part of the original plan. The first year we had it in uh, just the southern, and last year we took it out into the regions and the East African leg was held in Nairobi. Uh, this year we chose Rwanda because it's, it's the fastest growing economy in the East African region now. I think for us also to showcase the president's vision, he wants to promote Rwanda as having uh, grown in terms of corporate governance, co in terms of its world class uh, infrastructure, he wants to position it as the economic hub of East Africa. The growth rate of resurgent Rwanda is expected to be at least 7.5% this year, according to the man guiding the economy, the finance minister, Klava Gatete. This maintains strong growth, averaging at around 8% a year for the last five years. Uh, the president's leadership for uh, our government has his vision of making this country a middle-income status country by the year 2020 is not just something written on paper. He has really shown the leadership by developing a strategy, the one we call the Economic Development and Poverty Reduction Strategy. We have just completed a five-year strategy, and now he's leading a second-year generation strategy that is focusing mainly on not only growing the economy, but also reducing the poverty. And that's why this uh, year's strategy, which is starting now for the next five years, is focusing on four areas. One is economic transformation, which is going to continue to grow the economy to the level of 11.5% by the year 2020. And at the same time, it is also uh, focusing on the rural development. And that rural development part is the one that is going to have a significant impact on poverty reduction. But also, I believe it's not enough. And the, the other focus is on productivity, on making sure that uh, we create the skills that are needed and throw the, the whole economy that's going to support the uh, the economic transformation that is going to support the rural development and making sure that it can sustain the economy. And the last part, as he believes, as you know, uh, is that he believes in governance. And accountable governance is very, very crucial because accountability and involving all the citizens is what can sustain the economic growth. And we believe those four areas are very, very crucial, and that's why he believes the private sector is a very, very important partner for this process to succeed. The continent's most prestigious business awards, the All Africa Business Leaders Awards, recognizes innovators and pioneers. The quality of entrance makes it tough for the judges. For the first time we had uh, applicants from Somalia, from Ethiopia and Burundi, um, which we hope um, is going to support our next nominations. But still we think that the participation has been good with um, the, the main countries of Kenya, Uganda and uh, Rwanda especially. It, it's really been very exciting to see the caliber of businesses that we have on, in the region. Very interesting entrepreneurs, people that have gone beyond um, you know, odds to achieve something. And as we'll be seeing from the nominations and from the winners, it, it's really people that have truly inspiring stories. And it's not one or two. During the judging process, we actually found that there were a number of people that excelled. And it was actually not an easy choice. I think the one wonderful thing about the ABLA Awards, it's a platform, first of all, to create, to say that we've got good leaders, both private and in the public sector, who can take the African agenda in this um, century, where Africa is one of the emerging economies and the, where Africa is the next frontier, where all eyes are now on Africa. So there is hope that we've got leaders who can take the agenda. When you look at the kind of nominees we had this year in ABLA 2013, very high profile 
good caliber of nominees in every area. And especially even in the, the woman, uh, business woman of the year, we saw more entries of women, whereby previously we didn't have women coming out and making themselves visible. Now we have more women making themselves visible and willing to be nominated or to nominate themselves also and to go through the judging process. The East Africa Business Woman of the Year Award celebrates a woman who exemplifies outstanding leadership in business and who has made a significant difference in the industry. This is what the judges had to say. As judges, what we were looking for in uh, this Business Woman of the Year were a couple of things. One of them was for us to understand the participation of this person in the business environment on entrepreneurship. But above all, the challenges uh, 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 that, that they have been able to overcome in governance, in corporate governance. The challenges of integrity and corporate governance, we thought we were very pertinent in the determination in, uh, of, of, their, of, their, of, of the business, of who the business woman of their world. The finalists in the East Africa Business Woman of the Year category are Priya Budabati, Craft Silicon Kenya ICT and Craft Silicon Foundation Kenya. Nazim Devji, DTB. Joanne Mwangi, PMS. Budabati, Director, Human Resources and Administration, and CEO, Craft Silicon Foundation. Congratulations. Uh, well, first I should say that I'm feeling very nice to be in Rwanda. It's a lovely country. Um, and uh, I'm feeling very excited about this award. Uh, it was a very tough competition, definitely. Winning wasn't very easy. Um, but yes, I do feel very proud of myself. I'm proud of myself for being a woman. Actually, not just a simple woman, but a successful woman. And uh, it's a motivation to all the women out there. It's, this award means a lot to me. And it means a lot to all my staff at Craft Silicon. It means a lot to my students at Craft Silicon Foundation, especially the young girls that I'm educating every single day on business leadership. And I feel Kenya, Africa itself, has a lot of potential, especially for women. Africa needs both men and women to work together. Our next category was the East Africa Young Business Leader of the Year Award. This recognizes professionals under the age of 40 who have reached success in their careers and are also making a difference in the community through their work. Ladies and gentlemen, let's see what the judges have to say about the East Africa Young Business Leader of the Year category. First of all, a business leader who is below the age of 40. And then we were also looking for um, a leader that has a strong business acumen um, and who has demonstrated a track record of uh, very strong performance, innovation in what they were doing, as well as being able to position the company that they run uh, well within the markets that they're serving. The finalists in the East Africa Young Business Leader of the Year category are Gachao Kiuna, Transcentury. Kamal Budabati, Craft Silicon ICT Kenya. Joshua Uigara, KCB. Fortunately, Dr. Gachao Kiuna is not available to collect his award, but will Muno Mfengi accept? We're very glad that uh, Dr. Gashao Kiuna won uh, Young Business Leader of the Year. Uh, he's, he's clearly demonstrated uh, that he's a leader, a, a great leader. Um, he's he's uh, in the past few years listed our business on the Nairobi Stock Exchange, raised capital to invest across power, transport and, infra and engineering, 
and uh, you know the growth that he's demonstrated um, it shows why he deserved the award. We are across our power businesses. We're selling electrical uh, manufacturing components, so including cables, transformers, and others. Our engineering business is also doing business in in Rwanda. Rwanda is a great country, a lot of potential, um, as well as as uh, the rest of East Africa, um, and clearly a, a growth leader with the, the over seven percent growth uh, that it demonstrates. It, it definitely is. As TransCentury, we're invested in the railway, in the in RVR, and we are working towards integrating the region. And through the Northern Corridor, a lot of goods are coming through Rwanda, and you know. The right way to look at East Africa isn't just by country, but as a region with a huge population base. Um, so we definitely buy into to the Honorable Minister's uh, thoughts of you know, an integrated East Africa. Well, we've seen two awards so far. Do stay with us in Kigali, in Rwanda. In the second half, I shall be presenting the Entrepreneur of the Year Award. Welcome back to Kigali, the capital of Rwanda, where we're here for the East African leg of the All Africa Business Leaders Awards, brought to you by Johnny Walker Blue Label. Now in a few moments, I'm going to be up on stage presenting the Entrepreneur of the Year Award. The finalists in the East Africa Entrepreneur of the Year category are... Peter Nduati, Resolution Health. Zafrula Khan, Chase Bank. Patrick Bitature, Simba Telecoms, Uganda. To announce the East Africa Entrepreneur of the Year Award, please join us on stage, Chris Bishop from the ABN Group. And to hand over the result is Judge Claire it's an honor to, to present this. Just two things. One thing, Forbes Africa magazine loves entrepreneurs. Secondly, we love the Rwanda story, and you'll read a lot more about it in the next edition that's coming out. <laughs> Congratulations to all. Without further ado, the winner is Mr. Peter Nduati, CEO, Resolution Insurance. Come on up. Congratulations. I still can't breathe. I can't breathe because I still can't believe that I've won. My competition was very tight. I was nominated a year ago, um, and I thought I was not exactly what they are looking for. So I'm, I'm ecstatic. I, I don't know what to say. And um, it's been a long journey for you. I mean, you started out with uh, an entrepreneurial idea that yes. uh, a lot of people no, uh, but many thought. people didn't believe that it can be done uh, and done profitably about ten years ago. Uh, I had just left employment. I was employed by Metropolitan Health Group and I decided to start a health insurance business in Kenya. I named the business Resolution Health East Africa Limited because I had, I had a target to cover East Africa. And I moved with 17 of, of my former employees, who are still, most, most of them are still with me, about 13 of them are still with me. And I had a vision. I'm still very far from achieving that particular vision. Uh, but I'm glad people are recognizing that journey. Like all good entrepreneurs, you took a big risk 10 years ago. Yes, it was big. What would you say to other entrepreneurs, maybe, who are looking at a, a risky business like yours? I mean, just before you get into that, just give us an idea of how much a risk it was. Uh, the biggest risk was selling my house, where my family lived, um, as, as seed capital. Um, and then, of course, moving with 17 employees, and I didn't know how I was going to pay them. Uh, very tough in the beginning, uh, paying them after 45 days, uh, but they stuck with me. What I was clear about is this can be done. I had a vision. And then it has happened. It's the only thing that I knew. 
So yeah, huge, huge, huge risk, but it's paid off. The East Africa Business Leader of the Year Award exemplifies outstanding leadership in business. He or she has to achieve positive financial results, increase shareholder value, sound management, proven corporate governance, demonstrations of innovation, best business practices and accountability, together with intangible qualities such as integrity and vision. Finalists in the East Africa Business Leader of the Year category are James Gatera, Bank of Kigali Jonathan Chiano, CEO, Uchumi Supermarkets Duncan Kibui, CEO, Chase Bank Mr. James Katera. Well, I've had the privilege of seeing the, the award, you know. Honorable Minister of Finance and the Guest of Honor, Honorable Minister of Trade, uh, my boss, uh, the Governor of the Central Bank, Claire Kamanzi, the CEO, uh, the Mayor of the Cleanest City in Africa, <laughs> the High Commissioners here present, the CEOs of different companies, ladies and gentlemen. And my apologies, Roberta. <laughs> and thank you so much uh, for organizing this function. And uh, most of the things, I guess, have been said. Uh, I'm very grateful and honored tonight to be receiving this important award. Oh, this is, this is amazing, it's very wonderful. And I'm excited, of course, humbled by receiving this award. Uh, it's a prestigious award, and uh, there were so, so many other nominees who were equally qualified. So to have received this award is really exciting. But that also um, keeps me on my toes to make sure that this is sustainable and to make sure that uh, I deliver greater results for this country, for my company, and show good examples to the young men and women of this country. How do you think it reflects on your, your seven years at the Bank of Kigali? The seven years of this bank has been uh, uh, very rewarding to uh, all stakeholders. We've seen this bank grow uh, from, nine, from six branches to now 64 branches. I've seen the capital of this bank grow from only 4 billion to now around 65 billion. The assets have grown, profitability has grown. And uh, what is most important, we, have, we are now hiring so many young men and women of this country. What this government has done is to make this country uh, investor friendly. For one, there is no restriction on the movement of funds coming in and going out, as long as these are clean funds. Uh, there is no restriction whatsoever. So the investor is free to come and invest and get their dividends out. Plus, uh, coming to this country, there is a one-stop center, which we call RDB, that looks after all the investors from the time they come, when they start a business, they are able to get ready capital treatment, they are able to uh, receive all the supports necessary from all our government ministers, they are there to help you. All the private sector people are there to give information. And uh, investors in this country are protected. We are, the taxation regime in this country is very friendly, very easy to know what you should expect. And uh, 
the laws here are very clear. Contracts are enforceable uh, very quickly. So I would encourage anyone who thinks about investing to think about Rwanda. And what kind of interest are you getting from around the world? Is it easy or difficult to sell Rwanda? Maybe it's in parts of the world where it's not known. That could have been the case, uh, difficult, uh, that could have been the case maybe five years ago. But now, looking at what has happened, for instance, when this country issued an IPO, it was highly oversubscribed. Sub uh, and the interest was generated more so from the international investors. Even internally, so many people wanted to buy BK. And uh, we saw it also in Brarirwa. The same interest was generated. But you, you saw also the, uh, our bond, when Rwanda issued a bond. It was highly oversubscribed. So that shows there is this interest in coming to this country. And this interest is for a good reason. This is a country with high accountability. Anyone in this country is accountable. Uh, we do what we say we are going to do. And um, the market is there. People get to return for their money. The final award pays tribute to the stalwarts of the industry. The All Africa Business Leaders Awards East Africa Lifetime Achievement Accolade is awarded to an individual who has contributed to business growth, innovation, technology and development, who has created the highest quality product and services. This went to the family of the late James Muwana from Kenya, a man who spent his life working hard in business. In the category of lifetime achievement, what the panel was looking for was a business leader who has made an impact as an entrepreneur. And they have made an impact over a long period of time, consistently they've been consistent. We were also looking for at a leader who is credible, has a business leader, they have been above board and they have displayed um, good leadership, not only in business, but also in the community. This is a leader who can be looked up to not only by other entrepreneurs or by startups or mature businesses, but even by leaders in the private sector, community, public sector, or walks of life. Your excellencies, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, good evening. Let me start by introducing the lady standing next to me. This is Mrs. Saula Mulwana, my mother, and chairman of the Mulwana Group of Companies. The Mulwana Group of Companies is a wholly indigenous family business, which was started by both my mother and my father. The group of companies of three manufacturing entities, Uganda Batteries Limited, which makes automobile batteries, Jessa Farm Dairy, which is a dairy farming and milk processing firm, and Nice House of Plastics, which, is, which makes plastic items for both household and industry. My name is Barbara Mulwana, a director in Mulwana Group of Companies. Just what do you think this award, what, what, what's, what's it going to mean to your family? Um, what it means is uh, endorsement to the beliefs and the behaviours and the values that Mr. Mulwana had. And I'm sure if he was here, it's really about passing it on to the next generation. So we're very honoured uh, to, to get this award, but it's really honoured in acknowledgement of Mr. Mulwana's, endorsement of Mr. Mulwana's beliefs and values. I'm proud of my husband. We are proud of our father, husband, a great man. He has done a lot for us and for the country. And for this, you people to re re recognize him, it makes us proud. Being a very nice and working man, hard working man. Now, ladies and gentlemen, this brings us to the end of the East Africa Business Leaders Award. A big congratulations to all the winners. A big round of applause. 
The finale of the All Africa Business Leaders Awards will be held in Durban, South Africa in mid-November. Well, it's been a very warm and joyful night here in Kigali, celebration of the incredible leadership there is out there in business in East Africa. From me, Chris Bishop, in Kigali, Rwanda, it's goodbye.